I want to show you an incredible app on Canva that can take your hand-drawn logos or graphics and turn them into editable SVG, color editable, really crisp quality images inside Canva. So hi, if we haven't met before, my name is Jackie and I'm a graphic designer who loves teaching business owners how they can create their own incredible brand and graphics that help their businesses to actually thrive and be something that they're really proud of and love. And so today's video is one that I've been teaching my students for a very long time inside my course DIY Design My Biz, but I've been teaching them a workaround way because it actually wasn't possible inside Canva, but it is now possible in Canva and I'm really excited to share it with you. This is particularly important if you are wanting to create your own logo. I've got a whole video on creating logos here, so I'm going to tag that, but the, in essence, we don't want to just use logos and graphics we find inside Canva unless it's just a basic shape because we don't own those graphics. We can never trademark them or copyright them. They're not ours to own. And so it's really great to own our logo. That's where drawing logos can come in. There's a heap of different ways I teach on how to create your own logo, but this is a really great one. If you're wanting to do something that's slightly more hand-drawn, you're wanting to do something that's really unique to you. I just want to point this out. I'm not a drawer. I cannot, I'm not, I, I have zero skills in drawing, yet this can still be something that we can use even for something quite simple because logos should be simple. We don't want them to be overcomplicated. And so I want to show you how you can get a drawing into Canva into being a really crisp, color changeable a vector file right now. So let's do it. So you're going to need three things. Firstly, an idea. Secondly, a blank piece of white paper. And thirdly, a really great pen. Ideally, you're going to be doing like a really a thickish texture. So I've got three things to show you. Here. I've just got a basic pen here. It's nothing kind of fancy. Wait for it to focus. Do the whole YouTuber thing. This is just an, a just a normal kind of ballpoint pen. This is not ideal, but if it's all that you have, you can totally use that. But again, it's not perfect. Mm. You've also got just a plain old pencil here. Again, it's not even sharp. Having it not sharp is probably almost a better thing, but this could be good for just doing your sketches to begin with. Ideally, you'd have something a bit more like this one. It doesn't have to be anything exactly like this, but something similar where it's got a thicker end to it. So you can see here, this has just got a little bit of a thicker end to it, which means that my lines are going to be thicker. You'll see why this is important soon. I'll actually probably use both of them so you can see the difference. But in essence, we need at least this ideally, but whatever you have, ideally a dark color, um, we work best for this. As I said, you're also going to need an idea. So for your branding and for your logo, it's really great to have an idea. Think of something that's really conceptual, but also think of something that's actually not too complex and over convoluted and something that's going to look really great, small and really great large because a logo needs to be versatile. If you're looking for help to do any of this kind of stuff, I actually have a program called the Co-Creation Design Club and I'll actually be with you and we can create these things together. We can brainstorm together. I can give you all the tools and techniques and we can actually create this together. If you're looking for that, just head to the link in the description. But in essence, having a really great conceptual idea is where things are really important. You can you can create a really great logo to the cows come home, but if it's not actually conceptually good and going to work in a variety of different layouts, it's not really a good logo. You're just drawing for the sake of it. So once you've got your idea, then it's time to get drawing. So I've also got just a plain white piece of paper. I literally just stole this from my printer. It's just a plain white piece of paper. You can use page in a notebook. You can use anything that's plain and white and isn't too complicated. Then you're just going to want to draw. What you want to think of is a few things. You want to make sure your drawing isn't too small and it's as thick as you can get it. So I'm just going to do a basic flower here. It's going to be no, no, no fancy logos going on. So I'm going to draw in pencil. I'm going to draw it in my pen. I'm going to draw it in the texture that I recommend. These are not going to works of art because I'm not going to waste your time doing that. <laughs> you go. But it is going to be something that hopefully you can use as inspiration to see how you can make it work in your own business. Now, the way the, one of the things I love about this is you can be as detailed as you like. Like you can be really neat and like you could use rulers and you could use measurements and you can make it really like neat and clean. Or if you want more of a hand drawn doodly kind of vibe for your logo, then just go with the flow, like make it kind of more not perfect and a bit more organic. So once I've got my images drawn, I need to just grab my phone. Nothing compli complicated here, but you need to grab your phone. You need to take a picture of this. If you've got a scanner, feel free to scan this in instead of taking a photo. But if you've got a, if you, if you've only got a camera, then that's okay. But what I want you to do is make sure you're cleaning the lens of your camera. That will make sure it's not blurry. It'll make sure there's no streaky lines happening and just make sure that's really clean. Then you want to make sure you have really good lighting. So for me here, I've got relatively good lighting. I think it'll be it'll be great actually, which is really helpful. But if you're in a if you're doing this at night time and you've only got the overhead lights on, it's going to be a bit tricky because what you're going to find is your phone shadow is in the actual picture. Ideally, you'd even hold this up to like a window. Um, like the windows behind you and you take the photo like this. But again, you want to make sure the light from your window isn't there. And you also want to make sure you're taking the photo from directly on top, that you're not taking the picture on an angle. This one's probably the most important because we can edit away bad lighting, but we can't edit away your wrong angle. So make sure that when you're taking the photo, like I'm just getting my phone here, I'm holding it directly on top of my piece of paper, directly, directly on top. I'm not doing it like this or like this or like this or like the, anything. It needs to be directly square on top of my image. Otherwise it's going to come out wrong. 
if you've got an iPhone as well, it actually is a little, I'm going to actually record my screen so you can see this. There's a little, there's a little um, cross on your screen that will let you know if you're directly on top. All right, so you can see here, if I move this around, that, that, that's not lined up. Whereas if I learn this perfectly on top, that little X, the little plus is going to line up together. So I'm going to go over and take my photos of each one of my different things. All right, so once that's done, you want to send your images to your computer. So you, however you've done this, for me, I can airdrop it because I'm working with an iPhone and a Mac. If you've got, if you don't have that, you could just send an email to yourself. You could do however you get images from your phone to your computer. Do that now by emailing or using like a Dropbox or a, um, airdrop. Anything of those is fine. So then, once you've sent your photos to your computer, it's now time to open up a Canva design. So I've just pressed create a new design. I like to you work on something that's not too small. The, the, the logo file that Canva recommends I find is too tiny. So instead, I'm just going to go custom size. Anything from anything larger than 2000 pixels, I, I would recommend. So you can leave it at 2000 pixels, or if you're an Australian like me, you might want to do like 20 centimeters. It doesn't really matter as long as it's not too small. So you've got some work room to move. Because if we do a design that's too small, you'll find that when you like jut the image or jut some text or something, like especially when you're working on a logo, it jumps quite far because it's actually quite a small design. Whereas the larger it is, the more, the more minute you can get with these changes. So I'm going to go into uploads and upload those images in. Um, so I'm just now going to insert each of those images into my screen and you'll see the difference of the quality of each of these. And you see the photos aren't like incredible. This one here even has like my microphone shadow in it, but it, we should be able to make it work. So first up, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put each of these on one page, to be honest. All right. So I'm going to show you the difference between each of these, but I'm going to do the best one first so that you can see how, what I'm actually aiming for. So I'm going to first crop this down. So you can use these little um, rectangular arrows to crop this down. We want to crop it to exactly where your actual image is because we don't need any of that extra space. Another cheats way to crop or another hack to cropping quicker is if you grab these candles, it actually just makes it bigger and smaller. But if you hold shift at the same time as holding that, it will crop. So I can do two edges at the same time. I'm going to make this a little bit larger. Now I need to edit it. I want to edit it just so it's as crisp as possible. So I'm going to click on the edit button, go to adjust. And you want to just edit a few of these settings. So if your image is a little bit dark, like you can tell, like this is a picture of white paper, but the white isn't white. So I'm going to lift up the brightness. If I drag this up. You'll see that it's getting close to the background color. You can also see that it's a little bit pink. I want to also take down the saturation. So because with this, this is a good thing to note. The best results that you're going to have is by with is with a one color design, keeping it one color, keeping it really clean. This is actually really good for a logo design because with logos, if they're one color, they're going to be far more versatile for you to use. So keeping this one color, like you don't want to color in this design. You want to keep it black, crisp, clean, thick, beautiful lines. So I'm going to bring down the saturation here under color just to get rid of um, that pink tone, just to make sure it's as clean as I possibly can have it. I might see if I want to fiddle with the highlights here. Yep. Highlights will bring that up. So just fiddle with a few of these. Sometimes contrast will help. Sometimes shadows will help. Just fiddle with these. Sometimes whites will help and see how you can get the closest. But you can see this here. It looks really crisp and clean already. So now it's ready to vectorize. So you want to go to apps, which is over on this left panel here. For me right now, this is a featured app, but if you can't see it, just type tracer into your app search. This one here, this purple one with, it's, it's the pen tool that we usually, usually use on Illustrator if you're Adobe, an, an Adobe person. So if I click on this and I've already got this image selected inside my artboard. So before I can press trace, I wanna make sure that Canva knows that I only wanna trace this cropped down image. So what I'm gonna do is insert a rectangle. I'm just pressing R on my keyboard to insert a rectangle. I'm just gonna make sure this is smaller than my design. I'm gonna click on the color and make this color into no color. Then I'm going to select both this clear box and my design by holding down shift and clicking to select both of them. Or I can click out of here and click and drag to select both of them. I'm then going to right click and press download selection. I can just pretty much leave this as is. That's totally fine. I could make this large if I wanted to for Canva Pro users, but I'm just going to press download. So what happens if I don't crop this image down and save it like that? You'll see that it's actually picked up the other part of the image. So it's picked up the whole image here. And we want this to be as close and as cropped to the actual icon as possible. Otherwise, it's going to get messy when we're using it in the future. So unless you took your photo perfectly and it let that little square around the actual image, just make sure you do that step. And then it's going to upload that brand new flower that I've just done on a new page just to make it nice and clear. And then I'm going to go back to my apps and find my tracer app. And then you can see here, I can either press choose file if I don't have one selected, or if I have one selected, I can press trace selected image. So I'm going to press trace selected image. And it's going to just perfectly trace that image. I can change the threshold here, um, which kind of just means how, how it picks things up. So you can see if I bring it down, it does, it picks up less of the ink, less of the black. If I bring it all the way up, it's going to pick up probably too much of the black. 
Actually, it's not too bad because it's quite a crisp image. There we go. It's gone too far. So usually right towards the end here is where you'll want it, but it will depend on the quality of the image you've got. When I'm happy, I'm going to press add to design. And you can see here, if I just delete my original photo, when I click on this, if I zoom all the way in, this is super duper clear, super duper crisp and clear. Whereas if I zoom into this one, you can see that it is absolutely not that. It is also fully color changeable. I can change this into my brand purple. Plus it is also totally transparent. So if I click on the change this color background, it's totally transparent as well. So that is a really, really robust way to create your logo file. So I wanna show you how to do it if you've got slightly less quality images. If you were doing something with such a small pen, even this one here, like if I make this quite small as a logo, it's starting to get a little bit hard to see because logos need to be able to be shrunk. And so even having drawn this image a tiny bit smaller would have, mean, would have meant that I can actually have a bit more thickness to my lines or I could draw over the thickness of my lines with my pen a few more times just to make it whatever thickness I want it to be. But with this pen one here that I've done, I'm going to use the same technique that I showed you with the other one. It's going to be actually quite hard to see when we make that logo different sizes. So I'm going to crop it, go again to adjust, change the colors, make that brightness up fiddle with that contrast a little bit, bring my highlights. You can see that my lines are getting a little bit gray. I wanna to try to bring them back to being black as thick as I can. I'm gonna play with the shadows here. See when I play with the shadows, it makes my lines blacker. I'm gonna do that. Maybe this one too, I'm gonna to bring it up this way. Pretty much I just fiddle with these until they're looking good. So this is actually looking quite nice. Now that I'm happy, you can see there's actually this little, this little accident I've done here. To fix that, I'm actually just gonna insert a rectangle. I just pressed R on my keyboard to do that. I can insert a circle, anything at all. I'm just gonna put a white box on top of this to make sure you can't see it. And there, I've got that, that fixed up. What I'm gonna do now is do my hack that I showed you earlier of grabbing my rectangle, making this clear, downloading all these parts together as a selection. The reason I have to do this to get to just, cause I can't just click on this image here and right click and press download. There's no download selection button because there's not a selection selected. I'm going to just download, select all of those. So I have that download selection. So that adding that clear rectangle is just my hack to make sure I can do that. So I've now inserted that image onto a new page. I'm going to now go back to the tracer app, trace selected image. And again, I can play with the threshold, but right there is pretty good. Press add to design and it's gonna add that to my design. I'm gonna delete my original. And you can see again, I've got a really beautiful crisp image that I can change the color of so, so easily, just like that. And I could then use this as a base of a logo. Like I could then say, oh, I actually wanna have a circle behind here. I could make this like an orange color if I wanted to. This looks, this is horrible color contrast, but let's let's just fix that up because I can't, I can't deal. <laughs> let's make this a darker color. And I could make this a little bit larger, have a little bit off center if I wanted to. And then I've got this cute little, this isn't great, but you get the idea of what you could do with it if you wanted to. I could then go on to add text in here. I could do like flower club. And again, you want to make sure your text is nice and large so it's visible. And this could be my little logo that I just drawn, that I've just drawn my all by myself. And this is totally unique to me. No one else is going to have this logo because no one else has gone to draw this flower like I have. So that's kind of how you can create your own logo out of this. But as you'll see, if I shrink this down, I'd like to say it was a bottom of a social media post. It's starting to get, it's not too bad, the but the flower would look a lot better if it was a little bit thicker, which is where doing it with that thicker pen can be useful. It also means you'll get more neatness with things. And now lastly, I'm going to use that pencil drawing just to see how we go with that. If, if pencil is all that you have, I'm going to crop this down again. You could always use a background remover here, but I find sometimes that that brings, that might take away some of the detail that you're wanting and it might not crop it perfectly. Um, you can see I've gone too bright here and this is getting a lot harder to make it look right. I'm gonna go and take away my contrast, make my saturation, lift up my whites. When I lift up my whites, my blacks start to go. So sometimes the best you might get is this because I don't wanna take away any of the, the black detail. So I'm gonna try with this. It's, I'm not super happy with it, but we'll see how it goes. All right, so now I'm gonna trace this image and see what we get. This is probably where we're gonna have to play with the threshold a little bit because this is a threshold I was using for the others, but as you can see, it's all black. If I drag this down a little bit, we'll see if it goes any better. So you can see now it's okay, but we're still collecting this stuff up here because it's like, this is kind of dark. Bring it down even more. All right, that's starting to look pretty good. And so you, you can go back and forth and fill with this as much as you like, but I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to press add to design, delete that. And it's, it's kind of worked. It's not too bad, um, but you can see how it's a little bit trickier to make that work. So that's how you can use the Trace app and you can create your very own unique logo just from using your own pieces of paper that you've drawn all by yourself. And so if you actually need some help creating your own logo, you want to help with brainstorming ideas and working out what's going to appeal to your audience and working out how you can get a quality and professional logo that doesn't look like you just whipped it together on camera and it looks like everyone else's logo, I would love to have you in the Co-Creation Design Club. I can work with you. I'll get to know you and your business. You get a whole heap of resources and you 
get my support and a bit of my team support to create your very own brand logo and then all the ongoing graphics that you need for your business. So just hit the link in the description if you're interested in that. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Thank you for getting to the end. And I would love to know what kind of logo do you want to create for your business? What do you want to draw? Um, at, let me know in the comments. I would love to hear.